is a chain of command. The brain, the hypothalamus, will tell the pituitary gland to release hormones, and those hormones released by the pituitary gland, they will affect the ovary. And the ovary will respond to those hormones. And the answer to those hormones is the ovaries releasing other hormones. And those hormones released by the ovaries affect the uterus. It's a chain of command. If you remove the ovaries, would the brain be able to control the uterus? No, because it's a chain of command. You cannot have your brain controlling your uterus. Your brain controls your ovaries. Is that clear? So, this is when the beauty starts, right? How this happens? Guys, this is so beautiful, but I know it is scary, right, at first. But it makes complete sense. So I just need you to have an open mind, open mind, and let's make sense of this, okay? Look at this. The brain releases, the brain, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland to release a hormone. The hormone is named follicular stimulating hormone, FSH. Follicular stimulating hormone. With the name follicular stimulating hormone, what do you believe the follicular stimulating hormone will do? Stimulate the follicle. So the follicular stimulating hormone, FSH, is dumped in the bloodstream. And if it's in the bloodstream, it goes everywhere. But it binds specifically receptors that you have in the ovaries. And when the ovaries are stimulated by the follicular stimulating hormone, that hormone stimulates the follicle to grow. And as the follicle grows, the egg that is in the follicle matures. Okay? Now, as this egg is maturing, the follicular cells are proliferating. So imagine like you have a little custard egg maturing inside. And the follicular cells that are protecting the egg, they are proliferating because the egg is maturing, so you have more and more follicular cells. It turns out that these follicular cells, they release estrogen. And as the follicle grows because the egg is maturing, you have more and more estrogen being dumped in the bloodstream. Because this is what releases estrogen. So you have more and more estrogen being dumped in the bloodstream. Now, this estrogen that's dumped in the bloodstream reaches the uterus. And the estrogen is what will change the uterine cycle. So, as you have the follicle maturing, the follicle developing and the egg maturing, the follicle grows and the follicle releases estrogen in the bloodstream. As the level of estrogen grows, basically that hormones is informing the uterus. Okay. We have this amount of estrogen in the bloodstream that continues going up, up, up the egg inside the ovary is almost ready to be released. So you have this coordination between the egg is almost ready to be released, being formed to the uterus because of the levels of estrogen. And as the uterus notice, okay, the egg is maturing, then the uterus starts, okay, if the egg is maturing, we need to have a good cushioning inside the uterus in the uterine lining to receive a possible fertilized egg. Because if you have an egg fertilized but the uterus is not prepared to implant the fertilized egg, it defeats the purpose. So as the estrogen levels are going up, the uterine inner lining starts being built up to receive a possible fertilized egg. When we have this level of estrogen going up that is informing the uterus that we have an egg almost ready to be implanted, 
also this same level of estrogen tells the brain that we need to expel the egg because now the egg, when we have this amount of estrogen in the bloodstream, the egg is ready to be released. And then when the brain notices that this level of estrogen is high, the brain releases this other hormone that's called luteinizing hormone. And the luteinizing hormone peak is what allows the egg to be released in the pelvic cavity. Now, this luteinizing hormone keeps stimulating these cells right here that were left inside the ovary. And then when the luteinizing hormone stimulates these follicular cells that were left behind in the ovary, these follicular cells, they do not only produce estrogen. Now, they, when they do not have the egg inside, they produce progesterone. Now guys, look at the name of the hormone. Progesterone. Gestational period is when a woman is pregnant. Progesterone is the hormone that prepares the inner lining of the uterus for gestation. So the progesterone hormone is the one that's really telling the inner lining of the uterus. Now is the time that you can get pregnant. You can have a fertilized egg implanted. So for the fertilized egg to be implanted, the inner lining of the uterus needs to be juicy <laughs> and very sticky and with lots of blood vessels to give all the nutrients to that possible fertilized egg. So if you look here, when you have progesterone in the bloodstream is when you have all this secretion of good things happening in the inner lining of the uterus. So the, the fertilized egg can stick there and you can have the development of an embryo. Yes? The progesterone is released by these follicular cells that were left inside the ovary. Now, no egg was fertilized. Nothing was implanted in the uterine cavity. You don't keep this thick layer inside the uterus. Because if you're keeping this thick layer inside the uterus, for a possible fertilized egg to implant, these will stay there and it gets old. And you cannot have an old thick layer of secretions and blood vessels to nourish an embryo that will start developing. So every single month when the body realizes, okay, there is no fertilized egg, the progesterone, the hormone that prepares for gestation, decreases and you shed off whatever was the thick layer inside the uterus. Because you cannot keep this. This is not good if it's old for an embryo to develop. So you need to shed it off. And that's what you call menstrual phase. So you have two cycles. You have the ovarian cycle happening in the ovary and you have the uterine cycle happening in the uterus. The brain controls the ovaries. The ovaries control the uterus. So what you are seeing here is that if you're talking about the ovaries, when the follicle with the egg inside is growing, that's called follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. And since the egg is just maturing, that is the time for you to make this inner lining of the uterus fresh because the egg is not ready to be fertilized. So when you look, you have the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle matching with the menstrual phase, which is when you lose all the inner lining of the uterus and matching with the proliferative phase when is the inner lining of the uterus is starting to rebuild. Now you have the inner lining of the uterus. Okay, good enough. And it matches to when the 
ovulation happens. And the ovulation just happens because the luteinizing hormone makes the ovary to expel the egg. But this luteinizing hormone was able to be released in this peak that causes the ovulation because of the levels of estrogen in the bloodstream that were very high and that indicated that the egg was mature. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now that you have the luteinizing hormone which affects the ovaries, you have the egg released and then is when you have the beginning of the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle. And the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle is the corpus luteum that is the follicular cells that are left behind in the ovaries secreting progesterone which prepares the uterus for gestation and that is what causes the secretory phase of the uterine cycle which is the phase of the uterine cycle that has lots of secretion. Does that make sense? Guys, they are cycles, they happen every month, they don't stop. But since one, the ovarian cycle controls the uterine cycle, the phases match. Why it was chosen? Why do you think it was chosen? that the menstrual phase would be the phase we would start the cycle. Because we can start their cycles, we can start them anywhere we want, but we start the cycle in the menstrual phase. Why not in when the ovulation happens? Why not in the secretory phase? The menstrual phase is the beginning of the cycle that coincides with the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle when the follicle starts to grow. This is the beginning because every single woman can identify when they start bleeding. You cannot say, oh, I'm ovulating today. No, <laughs> you don't know when you're ovulating. Oh, I need secretory phase because my inner lining of the uterus is very juicy. No, you don't know that, but I can assure you, you all know when you start bleeding. So the most common sense to start the cycle is when the female starts bleeding. And the female starts bleeding, which is the menstrual phase, because whatever was thick and juicy and good to receive a fertilized egg is not necessary because there is no fertilized egg. So you need to remove all this out and then you rebuild it from zero so you can have this fresh, proper environment for a possible fertilized egg to implant. Does that make sense? Now, if you have, can you notice right here that as the follicle grows, FSH, the follicular stimulating hormone, goes down? This is just extra information. Guys, the follicular stimulating hormone is the hormone that stimulates the follicle to grow. And if you have this level of hormone in the bloodstream, follicles will be stimulated to grow. If your body has the information that estrogen is increasing, and you still have more follicular stimulating hormone being dumped in the bloodstream, what would happen? You have more follicles growing. And if you have more follicles growing, you have multiple eggs maturing, and then we would have litters, like cats. <laughs> it cannot happen, it cannot happen. So as the egg is maturing, our brain, okay, we already have an egg or two eggs maturing, or three eggs, depending on the case that are taught, but it's usually one egg, right? And this one egg is good enough, so let's stimulate the follicles growing less, let's decrease this amount of hormone in the bloodstream. So you don't have more than one egg maturing at the same time. Now I told you that the corpus luteum stays in the ovary and the corpus luteum is what secretes progesterone. And progesterone is what keeps this juicy for the egg to develop, for the fertilized egg to develop. When a female gets pregnant and there is the implantation of the egg, bleeding cannot happen because you lose the fertilized egg. And that's why if someone that's pregnant starts spotting, 
it's a concern because you cannot you lose the inner lining of the uterus anymore because you are pregnant. And this inner lining is just kept there because you have the progesterone, the hormone that prepares for gestation in the bloodstream keeping this thick. And for the first few months, what releases progesterone is this corpus luteum that is in the ovary. And if it's over pregnant, the corpus luteum becomes this scar tissue, the corpus, corpus albicans, because albicans is white, and then this is basically degraded. Now, the corpus luteum is what releases the progesterone, and the progesterone is, is what keeps this thick. That is inside the ovary. So any female that goes to the doctor and they're pregnant, the doctor can say which ovary released the egg that was fertilized. Because that ovary will have the corpus luteum inside, releasing the progesterone that is keeping this thick inner lining of the uterus. Does that make sense? It's just beautiful, isn't it? 